because we live in an area where it's a little bit more poverty, we had lots of kids that was coming to school hungry. When I first came here last year, at breakfast time, all the kids would be standing outside. If you think about why kids are not eating breakfast, it's often seen as not very cool to eat in the cafeteria. Research has shown that kids that do not eat breakfast, you tend to not make up those nutrients during the day. Kids are not getting enough vitamin D, calcium, potassium, or fiber. I'm here to take care of the sick kids, but we, I'd rather concentrate more on other illness and conditions and not a hungry child in the classroom. Studies have shown that kids that do not eat breakfast do not perform well in school. What I did was I listened, I listened, and I heard breakfast in the classroom. I said, we're doing it here at Barbara Moorhead. I wrote the mini grants for through Share Strength and Fuel Up to Play 60 and got the funding to ensure that all of our middle school students have breakfast. Once the program started and I could see how the morale of the students sort of picked up. One of the things I've seen is students are here I'm letting my students in the building probably 10 minutes earlier than I did last year. And that way we have time to make sure that the teacher gets their 45 minute instruction time in. And then the students still have time for breakfast. With breakfast, kids have shown improved test scores. They have shown improved behaviors in school, uh, less tardiness, less absenteeism. I see a big difference. The kids are not coming to me as sick. I don't have as many stomach aches. I don't have as many headaches. We have 340 students here at Robert Moorhead. One morning we serve 333 breakfasts. That is awesome. And I go into the classroom and the kids are eating cereal and, and you know they're doing their work, the teacher is taking care of business. I'm going to the hallways. Oh, oh it's nobody in the hallway. So it's wonderful, kids are eating. Breakfast in the classroom has really been great. Today is a new day and we'll be getting all. City is, is bedroom district of Batesville. A lot of our folks, they have to get up early, go work a job. A lot of times, you know, the, the kids are putting themselves on the buses. Most mornings it's really hectic. We've got a really great athletic program at Cave City, uh, from football to volleyball to baseball to the old time favorite Cave City, Arkansas, basketball. Because space is limited, we, we do our, our junior high programs in the morning. When we get there before 8, around 7.30, uh, so we can get enough time in with them. That was causing our athletes uh, in middle school to miss breakfast. And then also, we, we have over 20 bus routes in KC. And you can imagine the state of buses coming in one after the other. You're always going to have one bus comes in last, next to last, next to next to last. We had a lot of kids not eating breakfast. We had a lot of free kids not eating breakfast. Sometimes the only meal they're getting is at school. All kinds of things pop into your mind. I was worried about it at first. Chaos in the halls. I was expecting a pretty big mess. Well, like anything new, you know, uh, you always sit down. Uh, Elaine next did a great job set with uh, her lunch manager, Lisa Qualls. They kind of mapped out a plan. I really just kind of jumped in. You just got to decide you're going to do it and do it. It's a grab and go situation. They already have the first breakfast, and a lot of kids go and sit down and but the second breakfast is just grab it, go, walk down the hallway. I felt like it was easier on my staff and on the students and teachers if they just come through and got a grab and go rather than us delivering it to the classroom. And it's nice for them to have the opportunity to, uh, to grab breakfast. The kids have really bought into it. They're excited about it. Yeah. Now they get to eat and we get to work and we stay focused a lot better. And concentrate more. I mean, concentrate better. <laughs> I've done really well. I've got A's and B's now. It's basically like your simple hierarchy of needs. A child that's hungry obviously is going to have a harder time concentrating on learning in the classroom. On the average, we served 100 more per day. That's over 17,000. That was wild to me. I mean, I was so excited. It's, it's serving a lot of kids. Kids that weren't going to serve breakfast didn't have the opportunity. It's been a little extra work. It's real quick and easy. It solved a lot of problems that we've had as far as time in the morning. It's taking pressure off of our first breakfast. We're seeing all kinds of benefits. It's a lot less stressful in the mornings, not having to worry about me getting up and making her breakfast and her worrying about what she's going to eat for breakfast. I'm going to suspect that we will see, you know, uh, some better, better scores, and I'm hoping we're going to see better grades. It's been nothing but positive.
the No Kid Hungry Arkansas campaign office. Uh, and we'll give that information, but that's 501-399-9999, very easy number. And, um, and we can talk over some of the questions that you have and I can put you in touch with uh, our national and our state partners. So there are some initial uh, costs just for equipment, um, which each school has to decide what equipment. Some get wagons and some get coolers, some get kiosks. That's up to each individual school depending on the age of the group and also the traffic flow at the school. Share Our Strength has uh, lots of grants uh, that they will give to help with equipment, paper goods, anything that's needed to start up. In addition, of course, um, the Midwest Dairy Council with the fuel up to place 60. There's a funding available of up to $4,000 to help with the startup costs, whether it be equipment or taste testing of food. And then we have a lot of other national groups that have grants available, and we can put you in touch with those organizations. prefer to call it funding because sometimes the grant word kind of scares people, but really it's a very simple process. It's all online. I'm not a grant writer. I didn't have any background in this. If I can do it, anybody can. Participation rates shoot up, which means higher reimbursements. And so most of the schools, after a while have the participation rates up so much that they're then able to offer universal breakfast where breakfast is served to all children with no cost to their parents. Schools, once they get into an alternative breakfast delivery system, they do not want to go back. When schools start this, test scores go up, trips to the nurse go down, trips to the disciplinarian go down, attendance goes up, tardiness goes down. It's just a win-win situation for everyone. Before testing, always. The sheet that parents get, make sure they go to bed early, make sure they eat breakfast, make sure, you know, it's like, okay, shouldn't we have been eating breakfast all year long? <laughs> uh, if our retention's gonna be better, we're paying attention better, we learn better when we're eating breakfast. Is it really smart to just do that at testing time? Hello, I'm First Lady Ginger Beebe. As a mother and grandmother, I care deeply about the well-being of the children in our state. I'd like to thank you for working to provide our children with the best education possible because they are our future. Unfortunately, thousands of students across Arkansas go to school hungry every morning because they do not get breakfast at home and many of them do not participate in the current school breakfast programs either. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day for students. It prepares their minds and bodies for the school day. Schools across Arkansas are beginning to offer alternative breakfast programs to ensure their students start the day with the nutrition they need. I encourage you to join these schools by offering breakfast in the classroom or grab and go options for your students. We have the power to improve our children's health. It all starts 